Today is class two. Anna, aka my analyst, back with a, another stitchy update. It is April 18th, um, Easter Monday. Happy Easter to everyone. Um, if you're new, stopping by, I'm glad to have you. Hope you find something you like. If you're a repeat viewer, visitors, um, welcome back. Glad to have you join me again to see what I've been up to with my stitching. Um, this time I have several work in progress items to show you. I don't have any starts or any finishes. Um, I do have a bit of chatter about plans and stuff at the end. I, that'll, yeah. There's a fair bit of purchases that have been made, but nothing to show you yet. So that will have to be an upcoming video. Um, this is my actually the first video I've gotten around to doing in April, so we should have had a March update um, with all the stitchy stitch from stash type updates and the number of days stitched and all that. I had a computer crash, Jesus, it seems ages ago now. Still waiting on the IT dude to come around. Um, it just requires um, replacement of the charging port. The data is all still there, but in amongst the other data, is my Excel sheet with all my specs and whatnot. And I do have hard copy records. I could recreate it, but you know, I'm lazy, I'd rather stitch. So that will wait until I finally get uh, all my digital records back and then I'll have to play catch up for two months of data entry for on the Excel format and then maybe we'll get April and March in May. It is how it is. I hope everybody is keeping well. Nothing too exciting one way or the other here. I still go into town a couple of days a week for my work. Same with my husband. Um, don't go on the client sites much anymore. So even that is a very much restriction of my usual wandering around uh, during the work week. The kids are on school holidays this week officially. Uh, I I'm guessing, we, won't, we haven't heard officially, but I'm guessing there's no way they're going back to the school building when school is supposed to resume next week. I'm assuming it'll be distance education for at least a term. Um, I guess I figure that's, you know, at least the first couple of weeks of the term is a no-brainer. After that, they might actually start thinking about whether or not they want to resume the actual building. Um, beyond that, you know, things are as well as they can be, just enjoying a bit of extra time home and stitching, whatnot. So I hope you're all doing well. Um, I hope you've managed to find, you know, a Zoom group or whatever your uh, social outing of choice is. Um, we've been doing a fair bit of Zoom with my family and the local girls we've now met on Zoom to do our stitchy meetup on Zoom instead of the coffee shop. To be honest, I prefer the coffee shop. Zoom doesn't come with Eggs Benedict for breakfast. So looking forward to being, you know, actually in the same room and at the coffee shop with them. But for the moment, Zoom will do. And I've been spending a whole lot of time on virtual stitchers, particularly at the moment is the holiday weekend. So I've had four days just hanging at home. So spent quite a bit of time on virtual stitchers. Um, if anybody is interested in checking out virtual stitchers uh, I believe the group is open again however you need to um, answer the questions you basically it's need to tell them who invited you and stuff like that um, yeah it's they're, they're just trying to limit the number of new people that come in just so that everybody has a chance to feel comfortable and safe and, you know, we don't need any drama. Um, but it is open and, you know, they're quite a nice group to sit and chat with. So if you're looking for some social groups to hang with, it's a good spot to hang. Uh, beyond that, I think let's get into the whips. I have four of them here today. Um, only worked a few days on the Bella Filipina uh, Pearl of the Orient Seas. 
This is something I was doing as a sow with Belinda Aussie Stitcher and one of the local girls. Um, didn't make a great deal of progress. I'll try and find a before picture to show you, but I've predominantly been working trying to fill in lots of little missing bits in the tail and up to finish off the oranges of the tail. So before I forget, because I think in the last couple of videos I've been really terrible about remembering, this fabric is a 32 count, uh, that makes Belfast linen, um, color cascade, dark fantasy. So I love that blue. It's a gorgeous fabric. A little washed out compared, uh, compared to what it is in real life on screen, but not too bad. Uh, so yeah, like I said, filling in a bits of these um, little bits of tail and these, I don't know, little wispy bits, trails of things that come off, trying to get it down to where the only thing that's left in the tail is beads. I can't really remember where I left off when I finished, but I think the tail sans beads is mostly done. So it's no matter of working my way up. At some point I got a bit bored of reds and orange tails and I did do a bit of seaweed in here, um, a bit more black in the hair, but the bulk of it was down in that area. So I think she's coming along pretty well. Um, I will put the hashtag somewhere in this little spiel where you can um, follow on Instagram um, or join in if you're stitching this pattern. Love to see more uh, people progress. Um, I was particularly find it interesting to see how the pieces work on the different fabrics. Um, so, all good. Join in if you can. It'd be great to see more pictures. But, yeah. That is the Pearl of the Orient Seeds by Bella Filipina. Um, next on the pile is the Aura of Autumn. This is a artisy charting um, artwork by Leonid Afimov, and I have finished the second row of pages. So that's the full width of this panel. Actually, hold please. So I will show you what it will look like. So you got some frame of reference. We have three different panels. Clearly I'm working on this one and we're now two pages high. Mathematically I think there's eight pages so that's the one quarter mark of that panel. I'm doing mine on three separate pieces of paper or paper. Three separate pieces of fabric and then I will frame them individually and put them next to each other. Um, one day in the she shed in about 20 years. So, this is on a even weave, don't even remember the count. It's actually got a really nice printed gray mottling. It would be a lovely fabric for other things. But I just picked it because it was cheap and it was even weave. Being full of coverage, you're never going to see what's underneath. So, it's, yeah, I can't even remember the count or anything. Yeah. Don't know, and I'm not good enough with it to just be able to look at it and tell you. Um, it's stitched two over two, so it will be quite a big piece once it's done. Like I was saying, this is about a quarter of the piece. This is a year's effort. I started it end of April last year for my anniversary. Um, the piece just kind of reminds me of one particular evening wandering around in Paris. So with my husband, so that seemed a good enough reason to start it. Um, but yeah, at a quarter of the panel per year and three panels, mathematically that's a 12-year project. I 
suspect that, yeah, that won't actually happen that fast. So, although at the moment I've been, this, this piece is actually why I've ended up filming a floss tube today, because I wanted to show it to you before I put it back in the Q-snap so you could see the whole thing. And at the same time, I'm like, oh, I should get that out and start doing a little bit more again. So each of the end pieces are not quite um, full size or end pages. This one's probably only three quarters of a page. Um, and at this point, I will start on this side and work back that way. So that um, should give me an easier than usual extra page finish for my stats if I can get started on the next one. So there is that. Seem to have misplaced my needle. That's a bit concerning. I shall have to go looking for that. All right. The next thing I worked on was the Celtic summer. Um, I will try and find the picture of the stitch palette that I used to pick these colors from again, but you can see I made a fair bit of progress on this. We have, I just love the way these oranges are actually turning out. They kind of gave me a bit of a fit to pick which ones I wanted, but I, I really like the way they're turning out, those oranges. Um, and then of course the dark blues to the lighter blues in that robe she's wearing. I've started doing just enough of the border just to try and make sure I like the way the colors are coming out there. It's a bit hard to tell because I haven't definitively picked which beads I'm doing uh, on her yet. Actually, that's the original color scheme. So you can see it's quite different. It's Mine's much darker and warmer than this original. So... The things yet to decide are all the metallic that goes through the swirls. I didn't have the called for one, but from what I can tell, it's just gold. It's a PB01 treasure braid. And I have like three or four golds, but I did not have that one. And I thought, well, I'll use it as an excuse to get a card of that to see how it compares to the other ones I have. When that shows up, I will definitively pick which gold is going in there. Then I will be able to pick which bead will coordinate with that. Um, I have already had a go at picking the beads that will coordinate with the blue and the orange um, for the medallions. So when they show up, I will basically double check, make sure they look all right, um, and go from there. But at this point, I think I'm going to have to put her away for a bit. She's Without being able to do that gold, in amongst the swirlies. I just find I'm missing little bits of stitches and constantly going back. It's kind of a pain in the butt. So we will, um, yeah, we'll just kind of put a pause at least until that metallic shows up. I'm hoping it might ship after Easter. Yeah, it's given the current state of affairs, I'm not counting on anything. It might be a while, so this might have to go away. This fabric is a 32, no, not 32, 28 count cashel that I dyed myself. Um, the fabric's actually a bit darker and warmer than what you're seeing on screen. This is what you see on screen is what I was sort of aiming for. Um, but the mottling is more pronounced and definitely a bit of a reddish tinge in person. I think it works for these warmer colors. It just wasn't quite what I was aiming for. Um, I have dyed four pieces of fabric so that I can do all four ladies on the same background if, if I so choose. I expect uh, what I have in mind for the autumn one would look very nice on this fabric. I'm less convinced about spring and winter particularly, um, whether they will look as good on a warm fabric, but we will have to see. I suppose I could do two and two. At least now I have the option and know at least four pieces kind of coordinate. And if not, I'll use them for something else.
The last piece I've been working on, let me get it upright, is the beast, the chatelaine. <laughs> Even on this bigger board, it doesn't fit all on the one board. I have, I think last time I showed you guys this, I was still fixing one lot of the yellow flowers up here. But I've gone through, you can just see there's beads on the top of that set. Should be beads on one of the side sets. I can't even see them on screen. I don't know if you can or not. Basically, two out of the four flowers have been beaded. Um, there's beads all through the grasses as well. I ran into a bit of an issue with uh, the charting for those flower beads. So, oh, let's see if we can get up close. So these water lilies and then the bead colors are supposed to coordinate. So we have a light pink, a light blue, a light purple, and then a darker purple as you work around the um, perimeter. The light pink is in, the light blue is in, the beads match nicely. I have a dark purple bead, which I think it was a known error on the chart. But the way it's charted, the dark purple Water Lily actually is showing you the blue beads again and use the dark purple beads on the light purple water lilies. And I'm going, I can't do that. So clearly I will use the dark purple beads with the dark purple water lilies. That left me, what do I do with the light purple water lilies? I have some Mill Hill beads that are actually pretty close. I reckon they would have been all right with those light purple water lilies. But the rest of the beads on this thing are delicas. And I'm surprised at how obvious the difference between the Mill Hill and the delicas are. So I am waiting on a little vial of light purple delica beads, which is ridiculous because I only need about 24 little beads or something. I'm gonna have acres of this light purple bead left over. But when you consider the time and the money that has gone into this thing, I was not going to scrimp on the last $5 of beads. I was going to put the beads in there that I wanted. So, again, that, that particular little piece is on a bit of a hold until... Sorry, guys, we're having the usual struggle with the uh, space on the phone. Clearly, I need to call things off, but I haven't been there. So... We might have to make this a bit quick. So after I resolved what I was going to do on the beads, I started working on this border here. We'll have to take some close-up shots. Maybe I can see if I can insert some. But this border that basically stretches underneath the fish, it's heavily beaded in there, and then all the way around. So I just finished, that was about three days worth of hardcore beading to get all the way around. Pretty pleased to have that milestone out of the way. And I think what's more, with the exception of those couple of flower tops that need to be beaded, that basically breaks the back of all the beading on this. Clearly I have quite a few more specialty stitches and back stitching of the stone lanterns and stuff to do in this out of border, but I don't think there's not actually that many beads in that outer border. A few, like there's definitely one up at the top of the fish pond and in the corner piece there, but nothing like the volume of beads that I put in the center. So that's kind of a nice milestone to have behind me because that was a lot of beads guides. Um, still looks absolutely gorgeous. This piece is done on 28 count cashel. Again, dyed it myself. It's just a really pale gray. I think it looks, this piece looks phenomenal on that. Um, really pleased with how it's turned out. Uh, looking forward to getting some of these arches into place so I can get, you know, kind of a, the final idea of how it's going to look. 
I expect if I went hardcore and touched nothing else except finish this Chatelaine, we're probably looking at about two weeks worth of work now to get it finished. Um, don't think I'll actually do that, but I mean, the fact that you can kind of make a guess and, you know, say that I could be done that soon is pretty cool. This has been about a year's worth of effort. Um, little bit more, probably about 14 months to get to that point. But of course I've been doing heaps of other things. If you sat down and did a Chatelaine from start to finish, you're probably looking at closer to six, seven, eight months, depending on how much you stitch. Um, so that's every, <coughs> excuse me, everything I've worked on. That brings us to what are we going to do next? So mania what to do with mania we um i've never been one to participate in mania before the whole concept of starting you know a project a day for 30 days whatever it's just not really my cup of tea um i have more i suppose the, the ideas that you see people do with the mirabilia mania where they only work on their mirrors for the month of may has more appeal um, I do have two fancy ladies, even if they're not Mirabilia, between the Celtic Summer and the uh, Pearl of the Orient that I could work on and call it, you know, a fancy lady -a mania but I don't really feel the need to start a bunch more or any of the true mirrors that I have. But I got to thinking we could make it a mandala mania. So if you'll remember, I had said last time I filmed that I have tinctorium fully kitted at this point. It's ready to go. All I have to do is add fabric. And the Hawaiian mandala, I've bought the chart. I've got a fair bit of the supplies on order. Um, not all of them, but enough to give it a good start. You know, again, need to get the fabric to match. Um, and I have the Tahiti mandala that the chart is on its way. So this only occurred to me yesterday, but I'm thinking if I basically start those three, I could work on each mandala for 10 days in May and start the three mandalas. And that would be pretty, pretty maniac May. Um, actually, that'd be cool. And it would solve me the problem of what to do, or which one to start next, because I just start them all. You know, so the big question I have is what color to do fabric to do all these mandalas on. I did the Japanese moss garden on the gray. I don't really want to do just plain white background. I'm kind of enjoying this whole dyeing um, them. So I think I've decided I will do the tinctorium on a light sort of purple. A very subtle, probably more solid than mottled, but a light purple background fabric that I will dye. So I bought the dye, um, ordered the dye this morning, um, and we'll see how fast it gets here. Uh, the Hawaiian mandala, I'm thinking I'd want to wait till I got enough fabric, uh, flosses to do a floss toss on it. But I'm thinking maybe this same uh, modeled fabric that I'm doing Celtic Summer on would be great for the Hawaiian mandala. Um, I quite like how this turned out and the warm colors I think would go well with the reds and stuff that's in the Hawaiian mandala. And for the Tahiti mandala, I'm thinking just a pale blue. That one's probably the hardest because Currently, at this point, I don't even have the threads on order. Um, and of course, with everything being askew, even if I ordered them today, you know, found a material list, ordered things today, I'm not sure when they will get here. Um, I can certainly get my hands on the DMC it calls for, but everything else is really kind of questionable. Um, but I'm hoping that I could maybe scab together enough of the supplies to justify cutting and dyeing the fabric and getting a few stitches in to call it started. 
please tell me I am absolutely freaking nuts for having three mandalas, or even considering three, starting three mandalas in the span of a month. This is, that's just plain nuts talk. I'm sure it is. So that leads me to the Stitch from Stash update that I don't have because of the computer crash. With all that buying threads for the Hawaiian mandala, I bought a whole bunch of fabric, white cash out linen to dye for the various mandalas. The dye to dye said fabrics. Yeah, my Stitch from Stash budget isn't looking very good. And even with uh, Stephanie Misoko so crafty adding an excuse where we could double our budget for three months or something to support local suppliers. Um, I still think I may have blown that quite substantially. We shall see. Um, I mean, it is what it is. Um, on the upside, upside, downside, I don't know. I was meant to be in Perth at the moment, so the plan always was to go have a sticky beak at the LNS in Perth, Stitcher's Corner, for any of you over in the West, um, and see what treasures I could find there. I didn't have any real hard and fast plans, but obviously that's not happening, so I've saved that money to put to the mandalas. And the original plan was basically to try and save up as much of my Stitch from Stash budget as possible to blow at the LNS in Minneapolis when I go back there, Stitchville, for anybody in the Midwest. Um, but clearly not going uh, to the Midwest either in June. So with those trips permanently on hold at that, this point, I feel like I have an excuse. I can start new things. <laughs> and I can buy heaps of specialty fabrics and threads. But the million dollar question is when they will show up and at this point nobody really knows. So that's my plan. If I can make it, I will start three mandalas in May because this sounds just totally nuts and awesome. And besides, I'm gonna finish the Japanese one. So I'll need a new one. All good. I will catch you in a couple of weeks. Keep safe, stay home, do your stitching. Don't forget to wash your hands. Have a good one, guys. Bye.